Hello friends, welcome to third and final tutorial of K-mean clustering algorithm. In this tutorial, we'll talk about clustering some data into three clusters. In the previous example, we uh, we took the same data but we clustered it into two parts. But in this video, we are going to segregate the given data into three parts so first things first step number one is to select three random centroids and in this case I've chosen the first three data points as centroids so this is going to be my first centroid which is located at 1 1 so this is going to be my first centroid this is going to be my second centroid and this is going to be my third centroid and how do you show that <coughs> you show that in a tabular form like this that in step number one the random centroids are chosen at 1 1 1.52 and 3 comma 4 and these are nothing but these three points and the reason why I've chosen these centroids uh, which have data points also is uh, mentioned clearly in the previous tutorial you can watch that for more clarity but now we need to calculate uh, the distance of each individual data point from that centroid so if we talk about this column here this is the distance of these data points from the centroid 1 1 so in other words if we were to see that how far is 1 1 from the centroid 1 1 the answer will be 0 because if we substitute 1 comma 1 in this equation to find the Euclidean distance its distance will come out to be 0 so in other words 1 comma 1 is away from 1 comma 1 with no distance so it is exactly coinciding and the Euclidean distance is 0 and how far is 1 comma 1 to 1.5 comma 2.0 you can simply calculate it by substituting this so you can say that 1 minus 1.5 square plus 1 minus 2 square under root will give you a distance which will be 1.11 so substituting the value of data point coordinate into xi and xj and substituting the values of the centroids 1.5 and 2.0 in mi and mj to find Euclidean distance will give you distances of these data points to these centroids. Time and again I say that <coughs> this process might be iterative in nature but this has to be done rigorously to correctly solve the numerical given. So <coughs> point number two is 1.5, 2 and you'll see that this data point is coinciding with this centroid so its distance is 0 and its distance from centroid 1 is 1.12 and its distance from centroid uh, 3 which is located at 3 comma 4 is 2.5 and similarly I've calculated all the distances now <coughs> you'll see that the lowest Euclidean distance will put that data point into that cluster 
so data point 1 goes into cluster 1 data point 2 goes into cluster 2 because data point 2 has a zero distance from cluster 2 data point 3 goes to cluster 3 now here you'll need to find minimum distance data point 4 is closest to cluster 3 centroid so 4 goes to cluster 3 5 also goes to cluster 3 6 is closer to centroid 3 so it goes to cluster 3 and this also goes to cluster 3 so you can say that after first step uh, data point 1 stays in cluster 1, data point 2 stays in cluster 2 and rest of them they stay in cluster 3. Now we need to calculate new centroids and how are new centroids calculated? You need to take mean of the data points coordinates. How many data points do we have in centroid uh, with cluster at centroid 1 1? We just have 1. So its mean will not change. And similarly, cluster 2 with centroid at 1.5,2 has just one element. So the coordinates, coordinates of that element will remain the centroid of the cluster 2. But we have 5 elements in cluster 3. So it's centroid will change, we'll need to find new mean again and how do we find that? We can find that by using the formula 1 by 5 and let's talk about the first coordinate of all these. The first coordinates are 3 plus 5 plus 3.5 plus 4.5 plus 3.5 and the second coordinate of the centroid will be average of the second coordinates of the data points in cluster 3 so it will be 4 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5 plus 4.5 and when you calculate that new centroid is 3.9 comma 5.1 so you'll see the new centroid has shifted to 3.9 comma 5.1 so somewhere here so this becomes the new centroid for cl the cluster 3 elements now we again calculate the distances now you can see the first centroid remains at the place where it was previously placed second also and the third has changed because a number of elements were put into that cluster and the mean of all those elements is the new centroid so that's the trick now calculating again is pretty simple one again goes to cluster one it has a Euclidean distance of zero two goes to cluster two with a Euclidean distance 0, 3 goes into cluster 3 because it is still nearer to centroid 3.9, 5.1 and 4 stays in cluster 3, 5 also stays in cluster 3, 6 and 7 they also stay in cluster 3. You simply need to calculate Euclidean distance of these data points from these centroids and you'll see that the minimum distance of 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 is from the centroid 3. So they all stay in this cluster. No, no data point has moved into any other cluster. So even if we calculate the new centroids now, the, their mean will not change. So this is the locked position. And this is how uh, the data is clustered into 3 parts now had one of these data points shifted to some other cluster its mean would have changed its uh, 
its centroid would have changed and that would have changed the dynamics of the system but that's the beauty of uh, k-mean clustering that after a few iterations everything um, is settled and you get the final cluster values and clusters uh, so i hope this example was of help uh, in understanding how um, the centroid shifts itself when the data points are added into uh, the cluster in every step so thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel also i'll see you in the next video take care and bye bye